The dimension long-term versus short-term orientation was introduced by me in 1991 for a fifth dimension of differences between national societies. I had found four dimensions, but there was a research project by Professor Michael Bond from Hong Kong who had researched with a questionnaire made by Chinese scholars, and that questionnaire produced a dimension which we didn't have yet. And this dimension I introduced as the fifth, and I called it long versus short-term orientation. We only had data for 23 countries, and it was only in 2010 when Dr. Michael Minkov, my collaborator, discovered in the World Value Survey, 1995-2004 data, a dimension which was significantly correlated with this long-term versus short-term data we had already for the countries which we had in both studies. And now, suddenly, the number of countries for which we had data jumped to 93, more than four times as many. And those are the scores we use now. Now, long-term orientation stands for the fostering in a society of pragmatic virtues oriented to future rewards. In particular, perseverance, same as persistence, thrift, saving, and adapting to changing circumstances. And the opposite pole, short-term orientation, stands for the fostering in the society of virtues related to the past and the present, such as national pride, respect for tradition, preservation of faith, and fulfilling social obligations. What it relates to long-term orientation, what relates to short-term orientation? Uh, by the data we got from the World Value Survey, we could extend our list of the correlates of long-term and short-term orientation. And we found that on the long-term side, the feeling is that good and evil are relative. They can change over time what is good and what is evil, whereas on the short-term side, the feeling is that good and evil are absolute and always the same. Which means that on the long-term side, which norms apply depends on the situation, whereas on the short-term orientation side, fixed norms always apply, whatever the circumstances. In long-term oriented societies, the superior person is somebody who knows to adapt to the circumstances. In the short-term oriented society, the superior person is someone who is always the same. In the long-term orientation, we should be humble about ourselves, whereas on the short-term orientation, we seek positive information about ourselves. In the long-term side, we want to learn from other countries. On the short-term side, we are proud of our own country. On the long-term side, traditions can be changed. On the short-term side, traditions are sacrosanct. On the long-term side, when two truths oppose each other, they may be integrated into something new. In the short-term orientation, there is always a contradiction between A and B if they are not the same. And finally, in long-term orientation, you can say that what is very important to resolve a problem is common sense. And certainly choosing the middle way. In the short-term side, we find more fundamentalism, which is choosing the extreme. And there could be religious fundamentalism, but also ideological fundamentalism, political fundamentalism. How do we measure long- and short-term orientation? There is, again, no absolute standards. We can measure the differences between societies. And the position is measured in an index, the Long-Term Orientation Index, LTO. And we have 
scores for this index on a scale from 0 to 100, where 0 stands for short-term orientation and 100 stands for long-term orientation. Let me give you an example, again from the 93 countries for which in this case we have data. I picked again uh, 14 countries, 7 on the high side, 7 on the low side. And uh, on the high side we find, first of all, East Asia, Japan and China. But also relatively high is Germany and Russia. Uh, somewhat lower, but still on the higher side, we find the Netherlands and France and Italy, and on the brink, Sweden. Now, on the low side, but relatively close to the higher side, we find Britain, we find India, and short-term orientation, we find Israel, the United States, Mexico, Australia, Nigeria and other African countries, and finally, very short, Egypt and other Islamic countries. What can we do with this long-term orientation index? What does it correlate with? Well, I'll give you some examples of societal factors that can be measured elsewhere and that do correlate with long-term, short-term orientation. Uh, first of all, there is an interesting difference between the performance of secondary school students at mathematics, which are regularly measured in UNESCO research. In long-term oriented societies, secondary school students tend to score higher at mathematics, but to rate their own results lower. In the short-term oriented societies, secondary school students perform relatively poorly at mathematics, but they tend to overrate their own math results. On long-term oriented societies, there is a larger savings quote and funds are available for investment. In the short-term oriented societies, there is a smaller savings quote and there is little money for investment. On the long-term oriented side, companies seek market share and long-term profits. On the short-term side, the companies report quarterly results, and very important is the bottom line, which is the results in that particular period. In the long-term oriented societies, investors prefer family business and real estate, in the short-term oriented societies, there is more preference for shares and mutual funds. And finally, uh, but this is only true for poorer countries, uh, we found that in uh, poor countries that are long-term oriented, economic growth goes faster. In poor countries that are short-term oriented, economic growth goes slow. And uh, this is no longer true when countries become wealthy, because then there is no difference anymore. Don't these LTO scores change over time? Scores, again, reflect values transferred from parents to children. There has been a research project where the same values were studied for 15-year-olds across a number of countries, and we discovered that we get the same country differences for 15-year-olds as we got for the entire population. Values acquired in childhood change rarely in later life. We have looked at the research by Professor Bögelsteg, who compared answers to the same questions for two age cohorts 30 years apart from the World Value Survey. But for this dimension, there was no worldwide shift and there were no changes in the relative position of countries. Now, this is true in spite of the enormous technological changes that we have seen in the past period with the introduction of global information systems, which do affect private habits and which do affect business practices, but the way they do so tends to vary between societies according to the pre-established values. So, same technology does not mean that it is used in the same way. Mm -hmm.